Nope. Just for the giggles of it, we'll try removing the Chinesium filter, just because. Otherwise than that, I think it just kind of is what it is. Hi guys, Redneck Computer Geek. Every once in a while, you get that email that makes you start thinking you could be wrong. And I love those. They make my day. This machine has had a constant issue with idling ever since we really started hopping it up. Now, granted, it'll spin to six grand plus on stock internals, but it will not sit at an idle anything below about 1,200 RPM. This gentleman sent me an email. He wishes to remain anonymous, but his statement was that my intake that I improvised might actually be what is killing my idol. Let me grab the phone and I'll show you exactly what he was describing to me. Here we are. We've got a generic hop-up kit that we ordered, a stage one kit, whatever you would like to call it, that we ordered off of Amazon. Now this thing is blatantly, without question, a clone of an OMB warehouse kit. It even clones down to the exact jet size that comes with the OMB warehouse setup. Now while we're on the topic of jets, and we're on the topic of carburetors, the inner diameter bore of a Duramax 440 carburetor is giant. It is way bigger than any 390 carburetor stock. The jet size that's in a 390 is smaller than a Duramax stock jet size. That being said, that 104 is just barely bigger than a stock Duramax jet. That 107 is not even worth bothering with. What you can do is you can get this kit, plus you can order this drill bit set, and the second to largest and the largest drill bit set, if you drill out one of these, will be what will make this thing happy to run clear up into six grand once you remove the governor. Now, that being said, let's talk about what the gentleman sent me an email about. This is what he wanted to go and talk with me about, and I'll see if I can catch this on camera. If we look down through this, you're going to see right there, right there, that little cutout. And that little cutout is so that it rams air through that right there. Now, what is this? This is the idle jet circuit that goes through this style of carburetor. So when everything is closed, that has air that pushes through it and gets sucked in, goes through this little idle jet, and then comes out on the inside over here. And that is how you keep your engine running at idle. And this is an idle control screw that a Duramax is lacking. Now, if you could figure out how to bore the center of this, aka NR Racing now sells bored out Honda carbs, you would essentially have a Duramax carb that retains its idle jet control. But as it is right now, Duramax carbs, because they're generator carbs, do not have that, but they have a bigger bore in them. So the statement was that if I got one of these racing intakes, that I'm gonna have a cutout in it that's gonna match up with that idle jet right there and it's going to go through, and I'm going to pull air at idle, and the world is going to be happy again, and we'll be able to idle this thing at the starting line. That said, let's rip off my homemade intake. Let's throw this intake on and see what it does. Just wanted to add this little tidbit here. I didn't have to swap studs. The stock studs with stock nuts ended up fitting. This is my custom intake that I made myself. As you can see, I had a little tang piece here that went over for the choke. And I had taken the time to file out. But 
who knows maybe it wasn't good enough so we're gonna pop this thing on here and probably stick it something like this and then we'll see if we can fire this thing up let's find out if the viewer was right I have never been able to start it without holding down on the throttle just a little bit. So we're going to reach in here. We're going to set our choke. And then we're going to come over here. And we're just going to turn it on and see if it'll start without me hitting the gas. Help if I went the right direction. Well, I'd say the viewer was close to right. How about I set you guys in the tripod for five seconds and I get some gas in it. Now granted, it could just be it's going to need a little bit of gas to get it, a little bit of gas thumb pedal thing in order to get it up and running, and then we'll see if it'll idle. still died although it tried to drop to 700 for some reason i'm gonna adjust the idle screw in a little and see if that's what's going on all right so idle is turning clockwise to up your idle again let's try it with no holding the throttle We'll give it a little bit of choke. Okay. Might just need to warm up. Let's try that again. Nope. Alright, let's open the choke. Let's give it a little bit of throttle and see what happens. Well, we were closer. Let's try for that thousand mark and see if it'll stay on it. Nope. Just for the giggles of it, we'll try removing the Chinesium filter. Just because. Otherwise than that, I think it just kind of is what it is. Just for the giggles of it, we'll see if we can start it with the Chinesium filter off. Nope. And I can't swap hands fast enough to get to the throttle, so let's try this.
go. That seems to be sitting. Not quite. Well, everyone, at the end of this, I'm always willing to go and try an experiment, especially something that makes sense for an engine experiment on stuff like this. Unfortunately, it just kind of is what it is. Now, it seems to run fine with this filter on it. And to be honest, it looks a lot better than what was on there. So I'm probably just going to throw this on for now and just run it and we'll see what happens. At the very least, if I think that the filter is causing any problems, I'll just rip it right off for race day and we'll run it wide open. What could go wrong? Explode a piston to the moon? Yeah, maybe. Have fun, guys. And keep the comments coming.